Hello everyone, this is Harley from Garden FL and welcome to episode 16 of the Tropical Food Gardening TV series. And in today's episode, we're actually gonna be going to the farm and we're gonna be doing some stuff here at the house, but mainly at the farm. So I wanna show you the front of my house because it's been growing so much and it looks really good. Mm, look who just woke up. Mm. Oh, he wants to get that slizzard over here. Ay, no, que no come. He loves seeing mango wood, apparently. So this is the front portion of my house right here. And I have a lot of fruit trees, but the ones I want to show you are the ones in the ground. That is a sugar apple tree that I already harvested from, but right here is a wax Thai jumbo. And this is a really big... So this tree is actually growing so much and it's beautiful right now. As you can see, it's just blowing in the wind. Now I do need to stake this tree right here. As you can tell from the new growth and the leaves, it's just doing really good, very happy in the spot that it's in. So this maybe needs to go right here. And uh, have that, look at this guys. I think that it will have flowers and fruit within a year or so. And this was an air layer actually. If you look down here, this actually was an air layer, but it took very well in this in these soils. And for the most part, I think that wax jambus are pretty easy to grow in Florida. And uh, the fruit is very watery, kind of like a watermelon. It's not very, it's not like very flavorful packed, but I, uh, but people eat them, or at least I eat them for the texture and consistency of the wax jambu. Like the, kind of the wax feeling is very, very uh, appetizing to the, the palate, I think, in my opinion. And right next to it is actually the Mahashina Thai mango. So we have a lot of the Thai variety fruit here. As you see, very beautiful Mahashina. And I recently just tipped these Mahashinooks. I recently just tipped my mangoes, so over here maybe we could see some buds forming but it's still very young in the tipping process it takes about a month to a month and a half for the buds to actually form and and pop out since uh since the tipping so we still have some time to wait as you see i really like how this mahashinag mango stands right here because it's in front of the house it looks really nice and this is actually the base it's pretty thick and here we have a mango seedling we have to move Right next to the Mahashinuk is actually a jackfruit. Now this jackfruit is very beautiful, very big. I think this one will have fruit within two or three years or so. So as you see, it's already forming new buds, pushing new growth. And the base is still pretty thick on this one too. And uh, here, right here, I have an array of, this is a custard apple tree. And right here is the cherry lotta. Beautiful cherry lotta. This is actually the last one on the tree. We have two total. The one we harvested was the one last week and this is the last one. Still very soft, uh, very hard I mean. So this one I think will be ready in a month or so. Right here is an orange sherbet mango that I tipped as well recently. And we're gonna wait on this one to shoot out new uh, heads. This is another one I can't wait for. As you see, some of the sugar apples around my house uh, have sugar apples and not many because I realized that the trees are still very young. I kind of want them to grow, but some of the trees I'm allowing to, to fruit. And actually right behind this is actually a passion fruit vine. Now this passion fruit vine is actually a hybrid between Panama Red and Sunshine Yellow, I believe, or Sunrise Yellow, Sunshine Yellow, I forgot. But this uh, passion fruit is doing really well it came like that from the nursery, but as you see, it pushed out new growth. And I love how it's just grabbing onto everything. And now it, it got onto the oak, which I really wanted it to do in the first place. As you see, it's, oh wow, it already grabbed on right there. It's really cool. And it's just gonna climb all of that. and climb all the way up here and just go crazy up here because that's the plane. And eventually I'm gonna have passion fruit falling everywhere. This is a uh, sugar apple that was pollinated by nature. As you see, it's a bit oddly shaped, but it's it's hanging in there, literally. <laughs> These are actually two Jabodi Kaba trees. 
Now, I'm still learning how to grow Jibodikaba very good and fruiting them because I have a Jibodikaba in the ground, but I still haven't fruited it yet. These, I'm not sure. To be honest, I'm not sure which variety these Jibodikaba are. You see the base is a very thick base and it's been peeling. So what I know about Jibodikabas is that when they peel, that means they're, uh, you know, they're happy and they're beginning to, you know, make a new flesh so they can fruit from the new flesh because that's what Jibodikaba do. They fruit from the bark of their tree. Here's the other Jibodikaba that I have in the pot. And let me show you guys my Jibodi Kaba that I actually have in ground. So this is my Jibodi Kaba that I have in ground. It's actually very big. I bought it as a 30 gallon and it's been in the ground for about six to seven months now, maybe shorter or maybe a little longer. I'm not too sure. As you see, it has a very thick base too. And going up, as you could tell, I'm not sure when it's gonna fruit. I bought it fruiting, but it was in a pot. Uh, also, these trees, Jaboti Kabas, have very sensitive root systems. So, uh, and I planted it. I just planted it straight in the ground. But this soil is very soil, very fertile where it's at. So it's been peeling and stuff, but now it's kind of just chilling. And this is a red Jaboti Kaba. I'm not too sure about the other two varieties I have. I do know that the the burns and the tips of the leaves are not too good. This is due to uh, nutrients deficiencies. I'm not too sure exactly what it is, but if you guys do know, please let me know in the comments. I would like to correct this in my Jibodi Kaba to eventually, you know, have fruit. Because it is a pretty tree when it does fruit. And so, yeah. Wow, it's a very pretty dragonfly. Uh, I really like this tree right here and it's powder puffs. Very pretty tree. And it only blooms like this, I believe, once a year. I'm not sure. This year, this one has only bloomed this time of the year because it was attacked really hard by aphids. But now it's, it's doing very nice and blooming beautifully. Okay, walking back here, I want to show you guys my dragon fruit because I am someone who hasn't fruited a dragon fruit yet. And I'm so happy that this actually made it to the top and it broke by the wind and it just popped out that one. So I'm very grateful for that. And my bananas too have been growing like crazy. These are uh, bananas that I got from various people. And uh, it's just doing really well, guys. Everything I have planted here is edible. You can eat it. And you know, really nice, very beneficial to the, to the garden. This right here is my Atemoja Kefnir. As you see, it's pushing new growth. It's a baby, but it will, it'll grow. My Atemodia, right there. It's grafted too, as you can see. That's where the graft is done. Ah, uh, so it actually started raining, and it looks beautiful right now. As you can tell, the plants love getting this, uh, you know, getting soaked in natural rainwater. And this tree is just looking great now. It's blooming more than ever. And uh, you can tell over here. Now what I've been doing today is actually taking more mango seedlings out. And I'm gonna continue doing that once this rain kind of dies down a little bit. I'm kinda hungry, so I wanna eat some fruit. But yeah, everything is looking really good, really beautiful. This is a, just a light rain shower here in Bradenton, Florida. And uh, you know, everything, we needed some rain. It's been a while since we got a nice little rain shower like this. So all the plants have been craving it. So right now in Florida, it's actually citrus season. And right here I have a pomelo and a mandarin. Now I really love citrus. So let's cut these open to show you guys what they look like inside. So we're first gonna start with the pomelo. The pomelo skin is very kind of like, a little rough, but soft at the same time, very smooth. Has that type of sound compared to the mandarin, which is a little more softer and a little more, you know, juicier and compact. Oh, this is more like bigger and more firm. So we're just gonna cut into it like this. Oh, as you see, it's very juicy. Okay, so we have this one open. As you see, the pomelo is very big. 
well. And this looks like the red pomelo or the pink. I, I grew the pink variety, but this is the red. So, or it looks like, I don't know. It looks very good though. It smells, it smells a little citrusy. Not as much as like a mandarin, but it's where the taste is where it gets really good. So you don't peel this like a regular citrus. You know, you have to kind of open it like this. Then you make it like that. Then you take the skin right off and it kind of comes off just like that, you know? So you just eat the inside, which is this really juicy and delicious looking. Mm. So these are the insides of the pomelo. Mm. It's very juicy and like a combination of sweet and also a little tart. But it's a very good kind of mix. Very juicy and smooth on you. You can also eat this part, but right now I just want to focus on eating the juicy really middle part. This is delicious, very sweet too. Wow. This one on the other hand is very juicy. I just see it's juicing and falling out. Mm. This one you can eat regularly, just like this. You wanna take the peel off. This one has a much more citrusy smell to it um, over the pomelo. Mm. Very juicy, tangy, citrus. Both of these citrus are very seeded, which is okay, I love, you know, my seeds to plant them. <laughs> All right, so we just got here to the farm and instantly I see the Barbados cherry tree and it's full of red little fruits. So let's get a closer look. Wow, so this tree is just loaded. I haven't been to the farm in two days. <laughs> look at this one got eaten by, looks like a squirrel or something. Wow, all of them are ripening up. Very nice. A lot of them are still growing. And uh, let's check this tree over here. Yeah, this one as well has a lot of ripe ones. Looks like something tried biting into it. It's all cool. Alrighty. So something I wanted to show you guys is the mangoes that I tipped a few weeks ago. As you see, they are just eagerly, they're really trying to push out new growth. As you see, each one of those dots will become a new branch. And this one was jaw in one line. That one uh, actually was a Mahashinik. This is the KY Thai variety mango. You see, same thing. Okay, so this is the back of my property, what I've been working on recently. And just all around, you know, the trees are all doing really good. But I want to show you this mango back here that I planted. This mango is actually a harvest moon, but look at this one. This has shot out all this beautiful, shiny new growth, and it's gonna do really well. This mango actually gets very huge, about like four pounds plus the harvest moon mango. So I gave it as adequate space to kind of, you know, take up this area. And right back here, what I'm gonna be doing today is, um, I have a bunch of other plants that I wanna plant out. So I just wanna plant them out before the storms. The next three days, we have just nothing but rainstorms here. So, you know, I wanna get as much as I can in the ground so they can just benefit from that rainwater. Here's the Barbados cherry. As you can see, these branches are just carried with fruit. Now I'm gonna harvest a lot of them because uh, I'm pretty hungry and I love these cherries. This one was eaten. So just like that. And when you harvest them, they also, you also release like a load off the new ones that are forming. You know, they form much faster and much healthier. So it's just, this one was eaten by something, but I kind of still want to eat it. What's the other seed? And this one, beautiful. So you see, these are the cherries that I got. Beautiful little harvest. Mmm. The cherry. Mmm. So sweet. Mm. When you bite into them, they're really soft. The inside. So this tree is actually the purple camito, also known as star apple. Now I really love this tree just because of the fact how like golden the leaves are. This is such a kind of memorizing tree just to look at and see blow in the wind. 
Also right now in October it is flowering although the tree is still very young to hold any fruit so I'm not gonna let it uh, you know fruit but it that is uh, the natural response once I put it in the ground it, it started flowering as you see the top the top of the tree is very nice this is a new growth that is pushing and it's trying to branch out as well as you see very nice uh, foliage that it produces and right now it stands about four feet tall right now in October it went in the ground about two months ago I would say so it's very well adjusted and as you can see right over here is where I have the other now this is actually the green variety star fruit or star apple my apologies and this one you could tell us the green variety because of the smaller leaves compared to the purple one over there had much bigger leaves than this one and this one was flowering but it recently stopped and didn't say any fruit so it's good because the tree i want the tree to focus on you know actually growing rather than fruiting this one gets a little more sun than that one so it's actually a little bigger as far as vegetative growth but you know it's doing well it's doing great and this is the kind of front of my property so this one is just kind of tucked away right here along the other lines of fruit trees this jackfruit is also doing very well. As you see, it's pushing on new growth in various parts. And the jujube as well is just filled with pollinators. A lot of bees I see and uh, fruit flies, flies. I guess the, the flower is very aromatic. This is the Thai jumbo jujube or Thai giant jujube. Right here, the Pet Pet Chong is doing very well. It's pushing on new growth. And as you see, the leaves are very good. I haven't yet trimmed it. I will once it grows a little more. But as you see, this is one out of the three that we have planted right here. As you see, the other one is right here. And we actually just... This Pet Pet Chong is also doing very well. And I recently planted chop and drop material that is Mexican sunflower. As you can tell, they're very happy in their location. So this is a variegated pink lemon that I'm going to plant. I really like this tree because the pink lemon is very sweet and juicy. And when you pair it with the miracle fruit, it literally tastes like pink lemonade. So that's why I really like this plant. And it's just another citrus that I want to add to the farm. I love citrus. So. As you can tell by the leaves, it's variegated. And even the fruit is variegated on this lemon. That's what, another reason why I really like it. And the leaves are just, you know, it makes a really attractive tree just to put and have, you know? Now citrus grow really easy in our Florida soils. And if you don't know, there's actually citrus greening going on. It has been going on for quite a while now. It basically kills citrus but there are certain varieties that are resistant to it. This variety, this variegated pink lemon, I'm not too sure if it's resistant to it, but we're gonna try anyways to grow this lemon because I've seen other people who grow lemon trees in Florida. So we're gonna give it a try. 